damper receptors are one type of ionotropic glutamate receptors and they are found in the excitatory synapses where they regulate post synaptic potentials ampa stands for alpha amino 3 hydroxy 5 methyl 4 isoxapropionic acid so a mouthful of term anyway this particular thing is abbreviated as ampa and which is a agonist for this particular receptor and the receptor is named after its agonist this video is about what are ampa receptors electrophysiological features of ampa receptors and receptor subtypes if you haven't yet subscribed hit that subscribe button and use headphone for better quality we can find ampa receptors in the glutamatergic synapse where we can see them at the postsynaptic density under glutamate receptors there are many ionotropic and metabotropic receptors like ampa receptors kinet receptors and nmda receptors all of these are ionotropic receptors simply meaning they are ligand gated ion channels and the metabotropic glutamate receptors are known as mglur so all these uh, metabotropic receptors use second messengers and other intermediate players for functioning in this video we are going to focus on the ampa receptor only so ampa receptors are glutamate receptors they are ligand gated ion channels they regulate synaptic strength and important for synaptic plasticity let's look at the glutamatergic terminal to understand the function of ampa receptors here the presynaptic pot action potential has reached the synapse which lead to glutamate release in the synaptic cleft now in the post in the post synapse there is ampa receptors upon glutamate binding the opening of ampa receptor leads to a conduction of cations inside the post synapse which leads to a positive potential in the post synapse and this leads to the post synaptic response in order to understand ampa receptor kinetics more we need to understand the electrophysiological parameters so we would be performing a whole cell recording in a voltage clamp mode if you don't understand what is whole cell configuration or voltage clamp you can click on the video in the i button anyway here we would be injecting a specific holding the particular cell in specific voltage and measure the current so we can look at the current traces like this another way of looking at it is plotting a iv and conductance versus voltage plot so this particular graph is transformed into this iv plot which shows a linear pattern let me tell you what this linear pattern means but before that let me tell you the conductance versus voltage plot it's pretty much flat that means it has no voltage dependence which is pretty expected because ampa receptors are ligand gated ion channels they are not voltage gated ion channels so why they should be dependent on voltage anyway this part of the the graph shows the inward current at negative voltage that means simply in the negative voltage range the ampa receptor conducts current which is inward direction and that is reflected in the current traces as well but in the pos in the positive voltage the current direction is changed and it is outward anyway if we look at the conductance it clearly shows the conductance is not changing with respect with the change in voltage we can compare this with a nmda receptor which is another another glutamatergic receptors ionotropic glutamate receptor so nmda receptor shows its iv plot like this and gv plot like this so we can clearly understand almost no current is present in negative voltage whereas a little bit of current is present when the membrane potential becomes slightly more positive and there is outward current at positive voltage similarly there is no conductance in negative voltage so nmda receptor shows a voltage dependent kinetics anyway if we superimpose both these curves in one graph they would look like this in red we have nmda profiles and in green we have ampa receptor profiles what would we do with this data or this understanding if our electrophysiologist want to record ampa currents and get rid of nmda currents for a moment then they need this kind of information let me tell you how so here we are again doing a voltage clamp recording so we are giving 1 millimolar glutamate pulse for 1 millisecond and we are recording at 60 millivolts plus 60 millivolts so we'll get ampa current as well as nmda current marked in red 
Now, if we hold it at minus 60 millivolt, we would definitely get AMPA current as we can see from the IV plot, but we won't get any NMDA current. So, holding it at a negative voltage would ensure that we get rid of the NMDA current and we can purely isolate the AMPA current. Now, if we record in two parameters, the minus 60 millivolt would give you pure AMPA current and the plus 60 would give you a combined current NMDA plus AMPA. Now, once you know the value of AMPA, you can also know what is the NMDA current as well. So, all these physiological parameters can be understood using these IV plot and that's why it is super important. Let us quickly compare AMPA and NMDA receptors. So, AMPA conducts sodium and potassium whereas NMDA conducts calcium as well. Both of these channels has a reversal potential of 0 millivolt. The conductance is much more in case of NMDA receptors which is 50 picoseconds, uh, picoseconds which is 10 times higher than the AMPA receptors. The current kinetics is also different. For example, the AMPA shows a very fast opening and closing kinetics whereas the NMDA shows a sustained current kinetics. Now, AMPA and NMDA are kind of interdependent. When there is a glutamate release in the postsynaptic cleft, the AMPA receptor opens and allows cations to influx. At this point of time, NMDA receptors are not really active. That means even if glutamate binds to the NMDA receptor, they are really not conductive due to this magnesium block. But when certain amount of uh, sod or sodium or other cations influx through the AMPA receptors, the membrane inside becomes positive, which repels this magnesium ion out of these NMDA receptor. That allows the influx of cations through the NMDA receptor. So, moral of the story, AMPA and NMDA receptors are kind of interdependent. Let's look at the AMPA receptor subunits. These AMPA receptor subunits are known as GLUA4 to GLUA1. They are encoded by GRIA1 to 4 gene. The most common one is basically GLUA2 um, AMPA subunit and this shows a linear IV curve as expected. The non-GLUA2 subunit containing AMPA receptor shows an inward rectifying profile. That means they conduct current only in the inward direction, not in the outward direction. Now, these particular channels could be heterotetramer or homotetramer. GLUA1 homotetramer, GLUA2 homotetramer, 3 or 4 homotetramer can be found in many synapses. GLUA2 is the most common one. In case of heterotetramers, at least one combination has to be GLUA2. That means there could be GLUA24 heterotetramer, GLUA23 heterotetramer, or GLUA21 heterotetramer. We won't find GLUA13 heterotetramer generally. So, in this video, we have discussed what are AMPA receptors? We looked at they are ligand gated ion channels. They show no voltage dependence because they are ligand gated ion channels. They regulate synaptic activity, especially the postsynaptic potential. Then we looked at the electrophysiological properties of AMPA receptors and compared them with NMG. If you like this video, don't forget to share with your friends. Get notes and flashcards in my Facebook page and Instagram. All the links are provided in description. You can support my channel using Patreon or Beam UPI app. Under each video, there is an option for super thanks in the bottom right corner of the video. You can pay using Paytm and PayPal. Your small contribution means a lot for me. You can connect with me via social media. All the links are in the description. You can support the Nerd Medic channel and subscribe to his channel. All the links are provided in the description as well.